Welcome to Valheim Viking, a game that is easy to start, but so quickly you can get lost, without the guidance and direction that many other games will give you. Information is key to being successful in any game, so let me share these discoveries with you and dive right in. Would you like to have a pet wolf? I've got you covered. Head to the snow biome and then dig down with your pickaxe about head high. Try and smooth out just around the rim a bit so it's not so vertical, that way it's easier to get them into the pit. Then like any good survival game, you can use yourself as bait, luring the wolf down into the pit. After you've got the wolf in the pit and jumped out yourself, chuck in a stack of about 10 meat. You probably only need four in total, but it might be a hungry wolf. Then just run away to lose a bit of aggro so it calms down. Then the yellow hearts will appear, meaning it is actually eating and you're taming it. Then in about 30 minutes, you'll have a nice pet wolf. Then you can just dig down a bit and get it to follow you. You may or may not know about the treasure buried beneath the stones in the shape of a boat. You can save yourself a lot of time digging by pinpointing exactly where the location of the buried treasure is. You can do that by either equipping the wishbone that you get from killing bone mass. If you haven't got that yet, just equip a stag breaker, whack the ground and as soon as it says some numbers that means you're actually hitting something. Dig down to get your treasure. After you have defeated bone mass in the swamps, Keep the wishbone it equipped that he drops because it detects any form of metal. It would also detect mud piles with scrap iron for you. This is a great way of picking up additional iron and not being solely dependent on any crypts you find. Do you want to kill a troll fast? Then check this weapon out. As you can see, it's really simple because you can just stun lock them. I find this the easiest and the fastest way of killing the trolls. And the name of this awesome weapon is the Bronze Ape Or in my language, the Bronze Spear Pokey Thing. In this game there ain't no mountain high enough that you can't climb. Just run up the side, grab your pickaxe and then you can whack a hole in it to make a little ridge and then you can regen your stamina. If you want to save the durability on your pickaxe if you're going mining, then just use your hoe instead. It would also level off the ground. Sometimes this is a nice way of making a quick shortcut. Mining the ore can be very time consuming. Anything to speed up this process should hopefully help you out. If you hit the ore from the side you will do a lot less damage than you will hitting it from the top. In case you don't know, there's also a lot more ore underneath the ground than you see on the top. If you mine all the way around the ore, you'll be surprised just how much copper ore you can end up getting from just one vein. When you feel like a brave viking, or you just want to have some fun, you can use yourself as bait. The trolls attacks will damage ore and trees. That way you can gather up the resources afterwards. Be aware, with all the noise and ruckus though, other monsters might come along to join the party. This can also be a way of bypassing some of the early game though and going directly to the Bronze Age. Mining a large copper vein will take you a considerable amount of time. Pop down a campfire to keep your stamina regen going from the rest of the. This will also have the added benefit of keeping some of the Grey Dwarfs away whilst you're mining. If you accidentally go to craft the wrong item and happen to notice it, just jump before the crafting bar fills and it can cancel it. I've wasted a lot of materials this way. I hope this can save the same thing happening to you. I'm sure you know how important the rested buff is. To extend the duration of this buff comes in very handy, especially for the much longer boss fights you'll encounter. Popping down a few luxury and creature comforts increases your comfort level and in turn increasing the duration of this buff. Beds, rugs, tables, chairs, stools, all of the item space will have to be within 10 meters of your character for them to take effect. If you pop down a portal just by the starting zone, this can give you a quick way to swap out your forsaken power. Stick one by the starting area, then it'd be just a quick one minute round trip. Portals are really great for emergency situations. If you place a portal down and don't bother naming it down at your base, when you're out exploring more of the dangerous lands, make sure to bring spare materials for another portal. Then if the need arises, you can place down another portal very quickly. Two portals, if they're not named, will auto link, allowing you to get the hell out of dodge. When you come across these little sloped buildings in the meadows, when you dismantle these with your hammer, you can actually get cool wood from them. Very handy early game, as this will unlock numerous recipes and save you going to the Black Forest to get some. Using carts are great for you to transport ore, however they can be all good for actually unhooking from them. As trying to click on the tiny spot at which you can unhook is difficult to find especially with the camera angles. A much easier way is you can just dodge roll to unhook yourself. When you've had a hard day mining and you've gathered lots of ore, I'm sure you will want to take it back to your base in a fast and efficient manner. You can make paths from the ore that you're gathering to your base. That way travelling with the cart will be a lot smoother and a lot quicker and you won't have to keep referencing the map to know which way you're going. The cart will also take a lot less damage going along a smooth cart track than the bumpy terrain and hitting rocks. 
if you end up overloaded with ore whilst you're venturing out into the exotic lands the best boat for traveling the longer distances along the ocean and the quickest way is the long ships they have the most storage of 18 slots you can also actually load these up with carts this isn't the most subtle way of getting a cart onto a boat but as you can see it does work after you've jumped off your boat and got to dry land make sure not to lose your boat by marking it on the map i've wasted a lot of my time trying to refine mine in the past Hopefully this will save you from the same fate. It's even possible to place your boat on land if you wish to do so. Maybe for some decoration or just to confuse your neighbours. Hey, who knows? The function is there anyway. In any of the dungeons, you can place down a fire right at the entrance. You will then get your rested buff to help with stamina regen. This is not the only benefit of getting the rested buff whilst you're down in the crypts. Many people might not know or have forgotten that the rested buff also gives a bonus to how quickly you learn your skills by 50%. And any time you can level up any of your skills faster, surely can't be a bad thing. When you're out exploring the swamp biome, and you come across one of these fire geezers, take the time to actually mark it on your map. Trust me, it will make sense in a minute. Sooner or later, in the swamps, you're going to come across one of these walking tree abomination thing. They can take a fair while to kill with fire arrows. Don't waste your time using poison or frost arrows, they have little effect on it. If you're brave and good at dodging, you can try chopping it down with your axe. I'm an older, chubby viking, and I'm not so quick at dodging. So let's have some fun and stick some fire up its bum. I found this to be the quickest and easiest way to get rid of it. If you can just get it to walk over it about three times, that should do the trick. Here's a few quick commands you may or may not know. You can equip and unequip your weapons by pressing R. Pressing V allows you to toggle between auto pickup being on and off. You can also auto run in this game by pressing Q. This is a feature I didn't know about until very recently, so I thought I'd share this one with you. Another handy feature you can use when you're playing with your friends when you've got your map open, you can use your middle mouse button to ping points of interest on the map. That way they can mark it on their map before having to actually travel there. With a few of your friends travelling in different directions, you can mark up a lot of areas on the map. When you're splitting stacks, don't bother using the slider, because the much faster way you can just actually tap a number, enabling you to be able to split up stack in a much more accurate and efficient manner. When you come across the blobs in the swamp and you end up getting poisoned, I'm sure you find it as annoying as I do because of the damage it does over time whilst you're trying to fight other monsters as well. Without any poison resistance, it does about three points of damage. Now there is a root set armor that you can get in this game by killing the abomination that I've just showed you. You will need to kill two of them per piece of root armor. And as you can see, with just equipping the helmet, it takes the damage down to 1.9. A great tool for you to bring along to the swamp is the hoe. This enables you to terraform the ground, blocking off leeches, saving them from poisoning you, making paths from any crypts you've found, would also save you a lot of time in the future. Any paths you can make to reduce the amount of time you have to spend in the water can help you to either escape back to your base or any crypts that you've found for a safe haven. If you find yourself getting lost in any of the dungeons, the ones that are bigger than this and probably less well lit, chuck down some grey dwarf eyes at regular intervals and this will mark your way so you know where you've been and also a quick way of knowing where the exit is to get back out again. When you come across these small islands in the middle of the ocean, that's no island. They are leviathans and what you're after is the barnacles to harvest on their backs. This is where you get the chitin material from to be able to craft yourself a harpoon for when you want to have some fun with the sea serpent later on. When you're close to them, just jump off your boat to whack the brakes on, keeping the ladder side of the boat close to the actual leviathan because you've got a limited amount of time to farm as many barnacles as you can and then it starts sinking and then you'll be stuck in the middle of the ocean and you don't want too far to swim to get back to your boat. When you hear a rumble and a bit of a camera shake, this means about 10 seconds later, it'll start sinking. Dying in the middle of the ocean does suck. It ain't worth risking it for a few extra barnacles. When you're out hunting deers, balls, or any of the small critters, using just wooden arrows will save you on feathers. No point wasting any decent arrows because you might need them if any trolls come along. Real short building tip for you. I was happy to find this one out. If you're struggling to snap stuff down lower down, you can just press X to sit. This lowers the camera angle, allowing you to snap stuff much lower down. You can label up portals by putting signs on them. Sometimes this makes it a bit more convenient to see where they lead before you get up close to activate them. A simple tip, but it may come in handy for you. Always make sure to protect your portals. Just a simple fence to protect it and a door so you can come in and out. If not, some mad loxes might come along and chomp it to pieces like this. If you'd like to find some silver before getting yourself a wishbone from bone mass, you can use the stag breaker in the mountain region just hit the ground and as soon as you see that it says too hard means that there's actually some silver down below. Don't forget to bring a pickaxe and it will have to be iron grade or higher to be able to mine the silver. After you've killed the other boss and you head off to the crypts to get yourself some iron, if you just mine down the one side of the mud piles, 
so you can see anything lurking before it attacks you. Then any enemies behind it you can easily kill with your stag breaker. You should find doing it in this way a lot safer. If you fancy taking a stone golem in the mountains, first off they've got a lot of HP and they pack one hell of a punch. This may sound a little weird but the best thing to fight it with is a pickaxe. The harder part is dodging and staying alive. What I've discovered is a safer way is run in, one hit and then get back out again after it's swung down one of its arms. It can take a while to kill them, but what you're after is the crystals that they drop. If you'd like to craft yourself the crystal battle axe, you're going to have to kill about three of these. I wish you the best of luck, and I hope this technique works for you. In the forest and other biomes, when you come across these stone structures, you can whack down a workbench and a stone cutter, grab out your hammer, and then you can demolish all around it to get all the resources. And it's also fun to watch it crumble. If you're after the one or the two star balls, because they give a much better meat yield for when you tame them for your farm, Keep an eye out for these rune stones that reference the boars. This is where you should have a higher chance of finding them, and at night, around this location should be your best bet for getting a two-star boar. Make sure to always upgrade your workstations. As higher tiered items become available to you, this will be needed to be able to craft them. And at the better stations, you can also upgrade your weapons and armor as well. You can protect your base by building up a large wall using the hoe. Because this is a natural rock formation, then even the trolls can't break through it. Then any raids in the future, you can just pick them off with your bow and arrow. When you're out gathering materials like rocks, berries and mushrooms, I'm sure you've seen by now it can be a bit awkward to find them. What I do and many others is just turn down the vegetation to low, making things much easier to spot. This also helps with FPS and that's why speedrunners also use this technique. Your tame pets are going to need butchering at some point to give yourself some meat and you will need the butcher's knife for this. But why bother with one at a time using the butcher's knife when you can just turn on friendly fire? You can then use any weapon you like. I shall be nice and subtle and use the stag breaker. When it comes to transporting your pets, if you've made a base like I have, it can be a little bit problematic. However, if you turn on friendly fire, you can use the harpoon to transport them around. They're not very happy about it and it doesn't look very nice, but it gets the job done. If you spot any monsters and you'd like to lure them to you, you can use sound to your advantage. When you see the yellow circle above their heads, this means they're on their way and they will come looking for you. The small white eye above your head indicates this as well. Then you can just wait for them to come to you and finish them off. And an extra side note, the stag breaker is absolutely brilliant for dispatching skeletons because they are weak to blunt damage and also the knockback effect. In the swamps, if you'd like to build yourself a little outpost, the higher the better. If you go to whack any of the big trees with your axe and you can't damage it, neither can the monsters. Building up nice and high on these trees should keep you safely away from the pesky skeletons and also the abomination. And a nice little treehouse might even take you back to your childhood like it does me. If by any chance you get carried away swimming on a nice day with your stamina bar looking too low to get you back to shore, not just for combat but for getting out of this situation, stamina potions are a good thing because you can drink them while you're swimming and give you a stamina boost to get you back safely. Look after your pets because they will be targeted in raids and by any wandering monsters. Your pets will also have a nasty habit of wandering off and they can escape going upstairs. If you make a little outhouse, then you can just dig down a little bit and it stops them from being able to escape. So they can always be ready to farm when you need them. This may or may not concern you, but if you've got an older computer like I have, it seems the demands are greatest when the game's about to save. So if you see the 30 second warning, at this time I wouldn't recommend summoning any bosses. This is when the game stutters the most and will possibly crash on you. If you're after a specific wood type and you need to plant some trees, cultivate the sloped land like this. That way after you've planted your trees and they grow, it's a lot quicker to harvest. As you only have to chop down one or two trees and it creates a domino effect of bashing down loads more. When you come out to any of the shorelines, you can just jump off your boat and it slams the brakes on straight away. And you don't have to worry about your boat drifting off either. When you're approaching land on your boat, if you haven't got a nice dock area yet, then parking your boat either straight on or just off the coastline will make it much easier getting back out into sea. If you park them up parallel to the shoreline, it can be awkward and take a lot longer to turn them around. There's a couple of different choices if you'd like to build an underground base. You can dig down underneath the copper ore deposits and carve out quite a large area that way. This can take a bit of time and can be a little bit awkward as well. What I prefer to do in the Black Forest is to actually mine out underneath the Elder Boss. As you can see, it's quite spacious down here. It will look even better when the carpets are laid. If you're having a bit of trouble finding dragon eggs to summer modder, it is risky, but at night, they can be a bit easier to spot because they give off the pink purplish glow. In the plains biome, harvesting stone in large quantities becomes a lot faster. When you come across these large pillars of rock, just harvest around the base, this comes off in large chunks. When you've gone all the way around, 
the whole lot will shatter into several hundred stone pieces. You can have yourself some good fun in the plains when you find some tar pits. These black balls over here, if you're feeling brave you can just run into your local furling village, get them to chase you down to the tar pits and the dark growths will wipe them out. Then you can just pick up what's left, but be sure to stay away from the growths. If you need a little help killing the growths for the tar pits, then grab yourself a nice big cuddly locks. They are incredibly strong against them and chop them up quite nicely. Make sure to thank your locks after by tapping it with a few fire arrows. This is the easiest way of clearing out these pits that I have discovered so far. After you have killed the growths around the tar pit, there is plenty of tar to be gathered just from the one pool. Dig yourself a large pit or a long trench, down to a lower level than the pool of tar, then use your pickaxe to make them link and then you can drain all the tar away. This will then leave plenty of lumps that you can go along and pick up. If you only take one thing from all of these tips, please take this advice. The death mosquitoes in the plains I find to be a complete royal pain in the arse. Whatever you do, don't run. They have very low HP and are very easy to kill as long as you time it right. As they swoop down and then come towards you, because this will be in a straight line, this is the easiest time to time your swing to take them out. You can do this with just a torch, a stag breaker. I prefer using the bow. Using the bow, you've got a chance to take them out at a distance, but can still be done at close range. I won't ramble them. Please don't panic and run when you come across these. In the Mistlands, when you come across these diverger bases, save yourself the hassle of fighting them. You can use the green glowing balls, the eater ones, to destroy the warden inside. This will then make the residents your friends and they can defend the base for you and you can smash up any of the boxes and take any of the loot without aggroing them. On your map, when you discover where the queen is, just before you go up the stairs, there's a little wooden panel. If you break this down, you'll find an awful lot of space behind it where you can actually have yourself a little base, and it should keep you nice and safe away from flying bums that throw ticks at you. After you've killed a few leviathans and crafted yourself a harpoon, you can use this to leash the serpents that pop out of the water to say hi to you. Dragging them onto land, any of the creatures in the area would also attack it, and killing them on the land or in the shoreline will make it a lot easier to pick up any loot. This particular serpent isn't going to be killed. If you scout out and prepare an area big enough, you can create your own little sea life centre. I do hope some of these tips will come in useful for you. If you've seen them all before or know of any others, please let me know in the comments down below. It has taken quite some time to compile all these clips together. If you've enjoyed the video, then please tap the like button. This lets me know that my efforts have been worthwhile and it makes a big difference to small YouTube channels and would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. See you soon and of course, take it easy.